Professor Raghav Raghav, Honorable Minister of Water Resources, Andhra Pradesh, Shri Ambati Rambabuji, Health Minister Srimati Rajini Ji, Minister IT Godiwada Amarnathji, Chairman Central Water Commission Shri Kushwinder Voraji, prestigious organization to work with. The theme of this Congress, Tackling Water Scarcity in Agriculture, addresses the pressing concern which affects us all and we are committed to address it through multi-faceted approach. As we reflect on India's progress since independence, it is evident that we have come a long way in water sector. As a founding member of ICID, India has actively participated in shaping the global discourse on irrigation and drainage engineering. It's a well-established fact that irrigation can enhance agriculture productivity by increasing crop yields, improving crop quality, extending the growing season, reducing the risk of drought, and enabling crop diversification. However, unplanned irrigation also poses, poses some inherent threats to agriculture, such as increasing water logging, soil satellization, soil erosion, nutrient leaching, etc. Therefore, proper planning, design, implementation, and monitoring of irrigation infrastructures, along with adapting best agricultural practices, is essential for to optimize its benefits. Due to complexities and challenges in legal policy and technical framework of irrigation, it is essential to have comprehensive approach towards water sector as a whole rather than focus on irrigation alone. In 2019, our visionary Prime Minister Honorable Narendra Modi ji has brought all aspects of water and various organizations working in the water sector under the umbrella and created Ministry of Jal Shakti. This has given greater synergy and coherence to water management in India, and we have committed investment of more than US dollars, 140 billion by 2024 in water and sanitation sector. Since independence in 1947, India has achieved monumental agricultural progress from being net importer and barely sufficient to one of the largest exporters in all kind of agriculture and horticultural produces today. Irrigation plays a crucial role in India's journey, ensuring water availability and boosting crop yields and being, becoming such a food surplus nation. The total irrigation potential created in India so far is one of the order of 114 million hectares from various sources of surface and groundwater, which is over threefold increase in last 75 years. Storage plays a vital role in irrigation as it effectively bridges the gap between the fixed duration supply of water and the ever-present demand throughout the year. Additionally, storage facilities play a pivotal role in mitigating the risk associated with droughts and floods, which have the potential to significantly impact the agricultural productivity and livelihoods to countless farmer. India's total live storage capacity now stands around 250 billion cubic meters, which is significant increase from 111 cubic meters in 1971. However, due to the requirement for feasible sites and a high capital investment and rehabilitation and resettlement costs, it is becoming more and more challenging to create new storage reservoirs. In this context, it is essential that we manage our storage in more prudent and efficient manner. Our government, under the leadership of PM Modi ji, has adapted the approach of efficient management and utilization of existing water storage, along with creation of new storages and storing more and more water during the monsoon season. 
with the active involvement of all stakeholders and integrated reservoir operations. With the intent of enhancing physical access of water on farm, expand cultivable area under assured irrigation and improving on-farm water use efficiency. Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana was launched in 2015. It is an umbrella scheme with two major components. Firstly, accelerated benefits component, that is AIBP commonly known as, which focus on water faster completion of major and medium irrigation projects for effective realization of the irrigation benefits to farmers. And secondly, Har Khet Ko Pani, which we commonly call HKKP, which, inter, which literally means water to every field till the very and which encompasses our philosophy of all inclusive development. Under the HKKP, we are promoting command area development and water management. We are not just focusing on creating minor storage structures with lift irrigation schemes, but also repair, renovation, and restoration of existing water bodies. As of March 2023, PMKSY has created an additional irrigation potential of 2,500,000 hectares by completion of 54 projects. The scheme has also benefited more than 20 million farmers across the country. India's annual utilizable surface water resources are estimated at 690 billion cubic meters, while groundwater resources stand at 430 BCM. However, due to the increasing population, escalating trends of urbanization, and increasing water demand, per capita water availability in the country has witnessed a nearly 20% decline over the past two decades. Furthermore, it is projected to drop by another 20% by the year 2050, which will categorize India as a water-scarce nation. In light of this, it is imperative to implement measures that enhances water use efficiency, promote conservation, and ensure sustainability across various sectors and regions. To achieve the improvement in water use efficiency, a dedicated Bureau of Water Efficiency has been set up under the National Water Mission in 2022 to work on a mission mode. The Bureau is acting as a facilitator for promotion of improving water use efficiency across various sectors like irrigation, drinking water supply, power generation, industry in the country. To tackle losses and improve convenience efficiency in irrigation sector, Ministry of Jal Shakti is actively promoting pipe distribution network instead of traditional open field channels. In up, at almost all new irrigation projects and command area works, pipe irrigation network has been developed in about 17.500 thousand hectares command area under PMKSY by constructing more than 48,500 kilometers underground pipeline, about 28,000 hectares of arable land acquisition is successfully avoided with this initiative. Along with the first towards efficiency improvement, we have launched national frameworks for reuse of treated wastewater in January 2023, aimed at formulating reuse water policy by all state governments and promoting reuse of water in domestic, industrial, and agriculture sector. We all are aware about finite nature of water resources. Every drop of water reused is effectively creation of new drop of water. The only barrier to effectivity reuse effectively reuse our water, wastewater is not technical but psychological. I therefore appeal to this August gathering of water professionals from all around the world that let us coin and adapt the term of new water whenever we want to use the phrase of treated wastewater. Effectively use of new water in irrigation and industry is the need of the hour. Groundwater forms the backbone of irrigation, as more than 65% of irrigation in India is by groundwater. 
we are by far the largest user of groundwater in the world and today annually we are drawing more groundwater than US and China combined. With acute awareness of this challenge, we are making invisible groundwater visible and creating water aware communities through Atal Bhujal Yojana. This program being implemented in 81 water districts of our country heralds a change in the approach of management of groundwater. It is combination of demand and supply side interventions achieved through village wise water security plans. These plans include and inculcate behavioral changes at the grassroots level. National Aquifer Mapping and Management Program of India is unique initiative which can help to prepare, implement and monitor the efficacy of, various, of our various management interventions aimed at the long-term sustainability of groundwater. This will also help to achieve the sources, so source sustainability for drinking water, sustainable groundwater management and improved irrigation facilities. 2.4 million square kilometer of mapable area of country has been in identified and mapped. These maps will provide valuable technical insights for creation of aquifer recharge structures and planning for sustainable use of groundwater for irrigation. Water conservation will only be effective when people and communities will be at the center of any program. To make water everyone's business, the Prime Minister of India launched the Jal Shakti Abhiyan in 2019. This was a national call to action that involved millions of people in water conservation and recharge. The overwhelming response that we received has encouraged us to make this an annual campaign prior to the rains and monsoons. States, local bodies and communities are being encouraged and supported to take up restoration of traditional water bodies, rejuvenation of rivulets, water conservation and rainwater harvesting, reuse and recharge of bore wells, watershed development and intensive afforestation with the catch line that, uh, that catch the rain when it falls and wherever it falls. So far more than 10 million water conservation works have been completed under Jal Shakti Abhiyan since its launch in 2019. All across the country with the help of conversation, conversions of government funds, CSR and community contributions. This mission has certainly strengthened participatory management of irrigation infrastructure in our country. Indian climate is characterized by fixed duration precipitation pattern in the form of monsoonal rainfall during June to September, which mentioned by my dear friend Jagan Mohan Reddiji. Moreover, the changing trend of climatic patterns has already started affecting the precipitating pattern adversely. Such situations call upon a robust and climate resilient irrigation infrastructure. India has an ambitious river linking national program aimed at interbasin transfer of water in ecologically sustainable way. It is envisaged to reduce impact of floods from water surplus basins to simultaneously basins to water deficit basins and simultaneously addressing water storages in drought prone basins. So far under national perspective plan of interlinking, 30 links have been identified for execution. However, India being a federal country and water being a state subject, execution of such mammoth river interlinking projects, cutting across administrative and basin boundaries is very complex affair. In this context, I'm happy to mention that the guy, under the guidance of Honorable Prime Minister, the state of Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh came together and signed MOU for Kane and Betwa river interlinking projects with central assistance of more than 5 billion, which will provide annual irrigation to more than 1 million hectare and drinking water to more than 6.2 million people in the drought prone regions of Bundelkhand in central area. Dams are the integral part of the irrigation system. History of dam building in India has long and glorious past. India's first dam, Grand Anaikat, was built on Kaveri River by King Karikalan of the Kochola dynasty around 2000 years ago. The dam is still functional 
and irrigates millions of acres. India today boasts over 6,000 larger dams, making it the third country globally in terms of large dams. These dams and their dependent infrastructure were constructed with the enormous financial investment and also by displacement of the people affected by dam submergence. Recently, we witnessed tragedy of Darna dam failure in Libya, claiming more than 10,000 lives and bringing economy of the town to complete halt with the irreparable ecological damages. India also witnessed 42 major dam failures. Friends, in this context, dam safety becomes the vital aspect of not only irrigation and water security, but also of national security. Recognizing the fact under the visionary leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, the Dam Safety Act 2021 has been enacted, which has strengthened our country's dedication and resolve to safeguard its dams. This progressive legislation underscores the national nation's dedication to dam surveillance, inspection and maintenance by setting a benchmark of global dam safety standards. This legal framework is matched with the equally important policy initiative of Dam Rehabilitation and Improvement Program, which is commonly known as DRIP. DRIP is focused on enhancement of safety and operational performance of selected ailing dams and aging dams, along with strengthening of dam safety knowledge framework. Under first phase of DRIP, two, DRIP, 223 dams in seven states were covered addressing hydrological, structural and operational safety aspects. Phase two and three of DRIP started in 2021 when par with the partnership of World Bank covering 19 states and 736 dams. This program is prioritized by PM Modi ji and unprecedented budget close to 1.2 billion was made available for the same. In order to develop robust knowledge support system for dam owning agencies in addressing the critical issues related to dam safety, Government of India has developed the International Center of Excellence for Dams at IIT Rurki and National Center of Earthquake Safety of Dams at Malvia National Institute of Technology, Jaipur. To create a large pool of experts in various domains of dam safety, first of its kind, Master programs on dam safety and dam engineering have been started at IIT Roorkee and IISC Bangalore. I appeal all distinguished members of ICID to wholeheartedly support these initiatives in dam safety which have potential of becoming global standards in dam safety paradigm. Climate change is posing serious threats to the entire world. Indian subcontinent is also facing huge temporal and spatial variability. In respect of availability of water and climate change further worsens the situation. Climate change will make, make hydrologic events more unpredictable and lead to more frequent occurrence of hydrological extremities like floods and droughts. Various studies indicate greater expected loss in rubby crops and every 1% of rise in temperature estimated to reduce wheat production by 4.4 or 5 million tons. Collectively, the impact of climate change, continuous rise in population and deterioration in water quality due to various anthropogenic factors could affect the Indian irrigation sector. India being the second most populous country, Seventh largest, seventh largest country by area and the fifth largest country economy, but having only 4% of the freshwater resources of planet, is actually aware of our role in addressing the issue. Considering these potential threats, Prime, Minister Mood, Prime Minister's National Action Plan on Climate Change has been continuously making various mitigative and adaptive climate resilient interventions. National Water Mission and National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture are the core of NAPCC. Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, while addressing COP26 at Glasgow in November 2021, have introduced the concept of life, which stands for lifestyle for environment. Soon this concept was followed into action agenda with the joint launch of Mission Life.
by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres along with PM Modi in October 2022. Water sector is the heart of mission life which aims the pro-planet people and call for individual as well as community actions apart from government interventions in addressing issues of climate change. Through various global initiatives and recently through G20 engagement, India have demonstrated our dedication to sustainable water management practices. This 25th National Congress on Irrigation and Drainage provides a unique platform for us to share significant development in irrigation and drainage engineering. I urge all the participants and delegates that let us work toward tackling water scarcity in agriculture and ensuring sustainable future for generations to come. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all the participants, organizers, and partners for their contribution in making this Congress a resounding success. I once again thank government of Andhra Pradesh and request all of you present here to think this sector holistically and with, I am sure, that with the rich experience of the people gathered here from all around the world and from all around the country will certainly going to improve and contribute for water security, not only in, in our country, because this is such a time when we have to work, work in unison, think together, th act together, and build a safe future for the coming generations. Thank you very much.